The story begins by introducing us to our main protagonist, a level 1 adventurer named Bell Cradle. He is being chased by a minotaur who is obviously too much for him to handle. Just as the situation is getting dire, he is saved by a beautiful lady adventurer in armor. He falls in love instantly. He heads straight to the adventurer's guild, drenched in blood, and asks the secretary named Ina to tell him about the girl who saved him. After scolding him for being reckless by going to the dungeon alone despite being a beginner, she tells him that Eyes Wallenstein is from the Loki familiar, and that she is a level 5 sword mistress, who is the best in Aurario, the city they lived in. Although, what Bell was interested in are more personal details capable of making him get close to her. He is discouraged by Ina because Bell belongs to the Hestia familiar, and adventurers of different familiars can't get close. As he heads out, he is reminded that working hard and becoming strong is the best way to attract women. At home, he's united with his goddess Hestia, who is a minor carefree goddess. She updates his adventurer stats, and although his magic affinity is still zero, he gains a skill called Reality Phase which allows him to mature with great speed. However, she keeps this a secret from him. The next day, after training he goes to eat at a restaurant. Here he finds some adventurers from the Loki familiar along with Eyes. During their discussion, how he was saved by Eyes was brought up by her fellow party member. He mocks Belle for being weak and calls him a tomato kid, because his white hair was drenched in minotaur blood at the time. Bell gets embarrassed and rushes out of the restaurant. Out of frustration, he heads into the dungeon again to fight monsters. Some days later, Bell's stats has increased drastically as a result of his skill. This makes Hestia feel uneasy, because Bell is going overboard despite having inadequate equipments. She decides to help him out by getting a custom-made weapon for him. She leaves to attend the Banquet of the Gods, a party solely for gods and goddesses organized by Gainsha. At the banquet, she meets Freya the Goddess of Beauty and Loki who always ends up bickering with her. Hestia and Loki make a scene with their argument, centered around how broke Hestia is and how flat-chested Loki is. However, the other gods are so used to both of them fighting, that they anticipate and make bets on who would eventually win the argument. Hestia then meets with Hephaestus and begs her to make a custom-made weapon for Bell. While walking through town, Bell comes across some workers at his favorite restaurant. They ask him to go to Monster Philia, where he should give Seer her wallet which she forgot to take with her. Seer is another love interest of Bell who works at the restaurant. While searching for Seer, he stumbles on his goddess who forces him on a date. At the same time, Freya has sent a monster to kill Bell. She is known to meddle with adventurers who catch her eye. The monster begins to wreak havoc in the city, eventually interrupting their date. The silverback monster begins chasing both of them and Bell tries to confront it. However, his knife breaks without hurting the monster. He flees with Hestia and locks her in an alley, then making himself monster's bait. He's then chased by the monster all around town but has no means of attack. Just as he is about to be smashed into bits, Hestia shows up again. He's mad at her for making his efforts go to waste, but she tells him she will help him win. She then hands him the custom-made knife which is activated as he makes contact with it. She updates his stats using the knife and urges him to believe in himself and in her. Bell uses the knife to fight the monster head-on. He defeats it with ease this time. There are a lot of witnesses who cheered for his victory. At the guild, he tells Ina he needs permission to move to a higher level in the dungeon. She refuses, telling him his stats are still too low but is surprised when she confirms that Bell's stats has skyrocketed. She offers to help Bell purchase armor. The next day, they head to the Hephaestus familiar store called Babel where Bell comes across his goddess working part-time for goddess Hephaestus. He purchases a unique set of armor from the store, with the help of Ina who is turning out to be his third love interest. The next day, he heads out and encounters a beast girl who looked like the girl he saved in an alley earlier, but she argues that she's not the same person. She offers to work for him as a supporter in the dungeon. Her name is Lilaruka, and she smiles mischievously. In the dungeon, while Bell fights, she compliments the ability of his knife. As they rounded up their adventuring for the day, she offers him another knife to use. In obtaining the dead monster's gem, she uses the opportunity to steal his knife. At the guild, Ina points out that his knife is missing. As he begins searching for the knife he stumbles on Lily. She was caught with the knife by Seer and Ryu, her colleague, and was being chased by them. Before they stumbled on Bell searching for his knife which they gave to him. He is unaware that Lily stole the knife and Seer decides to keep it a secret. So Bell hired Lily and they kept exploring the dungeon together, earning a lot of money. Some days later, Ina and her colleague are talking about how the members of the Soma familiar seem to be on edge and shady. Ina is worried about Bell because Lily is also from the Soma familiar. Bell takes the next day off. He visits Seer in her workplace where he borrows a book about magic. As he reads the book at home, he sleeps off. Later that day, Hestia tries to update his status and notices he now has a magic attack called Firebolt. 
he sneaks out at night to test his new magic skill. Seeing how awesome his magic is, he gets carried away and overuses it, causing him to collapse. He is found by Eyes and a fellow adventurer, and Eyes had just finished defeating a floor boss. When he regains consciousness, he finds himself being nursed by Eyes. He is startled, and eventually runs away without saying a word. Bell later discovers that the magic book was a grimoire, which has become useless because he can't read it. Grimoires are expensive, so Hestia planned to make Bell lie that he never opened the book, but Bell refuses and went on to apologize. Surprisingly the matter was handled lightly by the restaurant owner Mamma Mia. We then get flashbacks from Lily's memory, how she was bullied, ripped off, and used after her adventurer parents died leaving her alone. All she had was the scum adventurers who refused to let her leave and live life outside the Soma familiar. They would destroy any sign of happiness she tried to hold on to. Eventually, she came to hate the adventurers. Ina inquires about the Soma familiar from Loki, who tells her that the members of the familiar don't serve the god Soma. Instead, they worship the booze he makes. They have to contribute so much to the familiar just to get a sip of the perfect booze. This makes them do anything for money. Ina is worried about Belle during her inspection of the dungeon she encounters eyes. As they talked about Bell, she overhears some adventurers talking about how Bell was going to be left for dead by his supporter. She requests of eyes to go to Bell's aid. In the dungeon, Lily convinces Bell to head to a deeper level with stronger monsters. However, as Bell fights, she throws monster bait around him and steals his knife with a hook. As the monsters overwhelm him, she runs away happy that she can sell the stolen knife to pay her way out of her familiar. As she heads out, she is intercepted by the adventurers who often bullied her. They took all her stuff including the key to her safe and left her in the midst of an army of killer ants which they lured there. As she accepted her fate ready to be devoured by monster ants, Bell comes to her aid with his firebolt skill, killing off all the monster ants. She bursts into tears and asks why he saved her. She confessed stealing from him and ripping him off any time they exchange the gems, gotten from their adventuring in the dungeon. Bells tells her that he'll save her again and again despite what happens and they make up. Bell takes Lily and introduces her to Hestia. Hestia makes her swear not to betray Bell ever again which she obliges. Bell heads to the guild, where he finds Ina and Eyes seated. He tries to run away again but Eyes stopped him. She gives him his equipment which he misplaced while fighting the orcs, shortly after he was betrayed by Lily. She saved him a third time. They both apologized to each other for various reasons, and eventually kicked off their friendship. She then offers to teach Bell how to fight. They kick off their training in another location, but Eyes is rather oblivious on how to train him. She ends up kicking him unintentionally. They later sparred, and she gave him a few tips while completely overwhelming him with her skills. We are taken back to the dungeon where we see one of Freya's henchmen give a minotaur a weapon. He trains the beasts on how to use it. This is for the sake of Freya's mischievous plan involving Bell. Bell keeps up with his training with Eyes, which was mainly him getting the beating of his life. She later urges him to nap, saying it is part of an adventurer's training. As she lays down, Bell hears conflicting voices in his head, that of his grandfather telling him it's okay to take advantage of a lady sleeping and the voice of Hestia discouraging him. The next day, Bell stumbles on Seer in town. She makes him help her with the dishes at the restaurant. Here, he's joined by Ryu, who tells him she was once an adventurer. Bell asks her how he can rank up his levels. He feels inferior and left behind by eyes who reached level 6. Ryu tells Bell he needs to have a special move and having an adventuring party is necessary to rank up quickly. Bell trains with eyes for the last time as she plans on joining her familiar members on an expedition into an unexplored floor of the dungeon. Bell and Lily walk into the dungeon, and he notices something feels off. They have encountered fewer monsters than usual. Suddenly a minotaur shows up. Bell has flashbacks from the day he was saved from a minotaur by eyes. He is frightened and can't move. This is the monster Freya sent after him with a weapon. The monster attacks them, but Lily manages to help a static Bell and made the attack. But she loses consciousness as a result of the attack. Bell fires shots of magic at it, but the monster is unhurt, and they continue fighting. At the same time, Eyes and her party encounter an adventurer who got attacked by the Minotaur. He explains the situation to them and Eyes runs to help Bell. As Bell continues his fight with the beast, Lily wakes up and he yells at her to run away. She runs away but comes back a few moments later with Eyes and her party, which includes Bete who mocked him way back at the restaurant. The monster knocks Bell over and Eyes rushes to save him. He has flashbacks of when she saved him before. He tells her he can't allow her to save him again and proceeds to fight the Minotaur, this time with more determination. Lily begs the others to save Belle but Belle's intense battle stops them from doing anything. His fighting doesn't seem like that of a level 1 adventurer. Eyes stops Bete as he tries to intervene. 
Bell fights brilliantly and defeats the monster but he also passes out while on his feet. Everyone from the Loki familiar is interested in Bell's stats. Someone checks it and tells them all his abilities are S-ranked already. Bell attains level 2 in less than 2 months and is becoming the talk of the town. Hestia also tells him he has gained a new skill called Argonaut. Argonaut means dreaming of becoming a hero and Hestia teases him about his childish side. Hestia tells Bell she is heading out to attend Denatus, a gathering of gods where they pick adventurer names for familiar members who have ranked up. At Denatus she comes across Tekamikazuchi, a god who is close to her familiar. He tells her that someone in his familiar also ranked up. Bell thinks about the possibility of getting a fancy name like Fire Blizzard or Tornado Typhoon, but is disappointed to hear he was given the name Little Rookie. At the restaurant, he meets with Ryu, Seer, and Lily who join him to celebrate his rank up. As they have a good time, some adventurers volunteer to accept him into their party, but the conversation quickly turns into a fight between Ryu and the adventurers. But the fight was cut short by Mama Mia, who is the owner of the bar. Bell tries to get a new armor like his former one made by Welf Krazo. When he mentions the name, the man in front of him reveals himself to be Welf. He offers to make his weapon and armor if Bell agrees to let him join his party. They head into the 11th floor of the dungeon immediately. Lily reveals that Welf's family used to be famous magic sword makers before their sudden downfall. Their conversation is interrupted by orc monsters. As they fight, a giant monster suddenly appears close to Lily. Other adventurers make a run for their lives because the monster is a baby dragon. Bell shoots his firebolt skill at the monster but the firebolt skill is white, instead of the usual flaming appearance. The monster dies in one hit, surprising even Bell himself. His goddess Hestia later tells him that the white attack was his newly acquired Argonaut skill. Later Welf offers to make something for Bell, although it was a test to see if Bell was after his magic sword making skill. He tells Bell how he hates magic swords. Welf eventually uses the minotaur horn which Bell carries out like a victory trophy to make a new knife for him. Bell and the others head to the middle floor of the dungeon. As they fight, they encounter more interesting monsters. In town, we are introduced to God Hermes and his associate Asfi, who also seem to be interested in Bell. Back in the dungeon, members of Tekamikazuchi familiar are being chased by a pack of wolf monsters. They decide to lead the monsters towards Bell's party, thus allowing them to escape. Bell's party is overwhelmed by monsters from all angles. Hours pass by on the surface, and familiar Tekamikazuchi tells Hestia what had occurred. Hestia decides to make a rescue party to find Bell and the others, although they are short on adventurers. Hermes offers to help along with Asfi. Hestia decides to join them despite knowing it is forbidden for gods to enter the dungeon. Hermes secretly recruits Ryu into their search party. Bell and his party are finding it difficult to survive as they head to the safe zone but Bell manages to defeat some minotaurs with his Argonaut skill. The rescue party has arrived. They fight monsters as they make their way to find Bell's party. Bell drags both of his exhausted party members with him as they descend to safety. As he reaches the 17th floor, he meets the floor boss who was supposed to have been defeated. He manages to outrun it with his party members before landing safely in the safe zone, where they are treated by the Loki familiar. The safe zone is like the surface with trees and light, like the sun provided by magical crystals. In the evening they are joined by the search party and it's a heartfelt reunion. Welf is handed a package with a note from his goddess and they call it a night. The next day they all head into the town in the dungeon. In the town, they go exploring and find that things are rather expensive there. As the ladies talk about going to bathe in the river, Hermes invites Belle to come with him. He later leads him to peek while the ladies are having their bath. Bell ends up falling into the pool and seeing everything that a part of himself hoped not to see. Later that day, Bell finds that Hestia has been kidnapped by some jealous adventurers and rushes to rescue her. The adventurers offer to release Hestia after a one-on-one -on -one duel. During the duel, the adventurer uses an invisibility trick to beat Bell mercilessly. Some moments later, Welf and some other adventurers come to his aid. The scene turns into a fight between adventurers. Bell manages to sense the invisible adventurer. He then renders his trick useless. As their fight begins reaching its climax, Hestia releases her goddess power and orders everyone to stop fighting. Just as the commotion dies down, a powerful monster called the Floor Boss shows up. It immediately begins wreaking havoc on everything on sight. All the adventurers team up to defeat the level 5 monster. They fire all the spells and attacks at their disposal but the monster regenerates instantly. It begins wreaking havoc again and injures most of the adventurers. Ryu and his Fi manage to suppress the monster for a while. Bell tries to use his Argonaut skill on the monster but it counters it and attacks Bell who is saved by a member of the Tekamikazuchi familiar. Bell is injured severely. As he lays down, he hears the voice of Hermes and Hestia and it reminds him of his grandfather. Bell rises and advances with a magic sword as he activates his Argonaut skill. Other adventurers release all their magic attacks trying to create an opportunity for Bell to strike. 
He charges his attack to the maximum and lunches at the monster. Bell defeats the monster. We then hear Hermes say to himself how Bell is the grandson of Zeus. 